Hey guys, Cordy Epps here with OTB Tax and I have alongside me, Dan, a good, great friend of mine that we have been working with for, I guess, over the last year and a half and helping clients keep more of their hard earned money. And so Dan is with a company called Task, that is T-A-S-C, and he'll probably share with us what that means in a minute. Dan, what does Task mean? Total Administrative Services Corporation. Look at there. Thank you, Dan, for being on today. <laughs> Thanks for having me, Courtney. It's a pleasure. You're welcome. So me and Dan have been trying to get together for a while and I send him tons of clients every, every couple of weeks. And, you know, I thought it would be very beneficial for you guys to just kind of understand what is a benefit administrator and what is a thing called an HRA and what is an HSA and, you know, there's things called cafeteria plans. So there's all of these fringe benefits. And the great thing about fringe benefits is that it's a way to get money out of your business without having to pay taxes on it. So it's actually a tax deduction for you. And one of the biggest reasons why you want business tax deductions as opposed to itemized deductions. And in this situation, we're talking about medical insurance and medical bills. You always want these to be business expenses. Well, they can't just be business expenses necessarily by themselves unless you have something called either an HSA or an HRA. An HRA is going to be a much better situation. And um, I'm going to let Dan just kind of share the ins and outs of both of these. But an HRA is a way that you can hire your spouse. Your spouse can in turn pay 100% of the medical bills and then you would reimburse your spouse and that will become 100% tax deductible as a business expense. So for those of you that don't know the difference between a business expense and an itemized deduction is that itemized deductions have caps. And what that means is just for medical bills and medical insurance, for instance, you have to go above seven and a half percent of your adjusted gross income or your AGI in order to get any benefit. And so if you're making a hundred grand a year, seven and a half percent of that is $7,500. Well, guess what? You can't take benefit off of the first $7,500 worth of deductions. As opposed to when we set up these HRAs, you do get to take a hundred percent deduction off of the medical bills day one, the minute that you get started. And Dan's going to actually show you how we can go backwards and we can get some of the insurance premium that you've already paid. And then a little bit of the bills. If you paid any bills this month, he's going to be able to share that with you. So Dan, I appreciate you being here today. I'm going to let you take it away and just share what share with the audience, kind of what H HRAs are, what are HSAs, what are the difference, why we would want them. And I want to also just kind of uh, build on it. We'll, we'll talk back and forth, but I want to be able to share with people why, um, how they're going to do it. Like it's not something that's super, super hard. We're going to help them handle it. They, all they need to do is reach out to you guys and you'll take it from there. Right? That's correct. Yes. Wonderful. And we do the consults. Those are free. So I'll be able to let you know by the end of a 15 minute conversation, if it's something that you actually would qualify for the critical component with an HRA is that it's an employee benefit deduction. So when somebody hires a spouse, for example, provides a W2, we now are in a situation where we can take the employee benefit deduction right on the front page of a Schedule C, for example. If you look at line 14 of a Schedule C from your tax return last year, you'll see that it says employee benefits. There's probably a zero there. If we set up an HRA, we're not only gonna be able to take out-of-pocket expenses that you talked about with the itemizations, but also insurance premiums. So when you take your insurance premiums, which currently, if you're self-employed, it's a self-employed health insurance deduction, and you're saving state and federal income tax, you're going to be able to save an additional 15 and percent on FICA uh, on top of all of the out of pocket, the vision, the dental, the prescriptions, the co-pays, the chiropractor. And the, on average, for somebody that qualifies for an HRA, it's over $5,000 in tax benefits. And it's just a matter of formalizing that plan, having the health reimbursement arrangement in place so that you legally are able to take that deduction when uh, a business return comes about at the end of the year. I love it. So let's talk about just for a second, um, because I want people to make sure I want people to understand what we're talking about. Yep. So when we talked about moving 
literally taking itemized deductions, which is your medical bills and your medical insurance. And now instead of them being there and getting limited amount of benefit, if any, because 96% of Americans get no benefit Correct. from any itemized deductions. Now we're moving 100% of those expenses over into business deductions and the one of the other benefits that I just heard him say, and I don't even think that I'm sharing sharing that, is that if you even if you did claim your medical insurance, which is a tax deduction, you can list that as self-employed health insurance. And but what happens is is that you're forced to pay self-employment taxes on that money unless you have an HRA in place. That's correct. correct. That's absolutely correct. So that's not only are you saving federal and state taxes off of your medical bills and your medical insurance, but you're also not paying self-employment taxes of 15.3%. So for those of you that have a Schedule C, this is huge. For those of you that have an S Corp election, you should be paying minimal and self-employment taxes anyway, but this is even more added benefit because the more money you have in expenses, obviously the, the less you would take in a paycheck that you would end up paying self-employment taxes on. That's correct. And I love it. You, you hit on an important topic there and that is the filing status of a business. Yes. Or if you're a sole proprietorship or you're an LLC being taxed as sole proprietorship, excuse me, sole proprietorship, where it's a Schedule C or a Schedule F, that employable spouse is critical in that situation because somebody within the entity needs to receive a W-2 wage in order to take an employee benefit deduction. If you're an S corporation or a C corporation, you can be an employee of your own business in that particular instance. So you wouldn't necessarily need an employable spouse if you're incorporated. So I know to, to your point, Courtney, a lot of times, you know, clients of yours that we've set up with these plans, it's best suited in a full proprietorship because we're able to save that additional state and federal taxes. Whereas on the corporate side, you're limited to FICA. You know, that's really the only benefit that you're getting. But, and, and so, and leading up to that, there are ways that you can structure your companies. You can have multiple companies and you can structure them in the way that you do have a Schedule C, a self proprietorship or an LLC um, where you pay your spouse. So for those of you that have, you know, you can have multiple companies. You, if you have employees in one entity, that's an S corp. You don't necessarily want to run this HRA through that company. You'd want to run it through a separate entity. And so for me, and I'll just kind of explain my situation. So it works out. I think examples help people better than anything is that I have a company called O2B Tax, right? That is my accounting firm. And for those of you that didn't know I had an accounting firm, if I just, I just talk a lot online, I really do have an accounting firm. So O2B Tax is the accounting firm and that I then pay a management fee over to a company called HBB Guru, Home-Based Business Guru. And so from there, that company then pays my children it also pays for my uh, spouse. So I hire my spouse and then we have an HRA. And so when I say that you, you hire your spouse and then your spouse has to then pay all the medical bills and then you reimburse them, it's not that hard. I literally have this amazing card. Um, I'm not going to show you the numbers, but let me see if, let me see where I've got it here. I'm going to share it with you. This is my card. This is my task card. Okay. So this is the card. I have one and my husband has one and we just use this card and then it drafts out of my business account. So it's not something that like you have to keep a ton of, um, you have to keep access to receipts. That's what a benefit administrator does. And that's exactly what, what uh, Dan's company does. So go ahead, take it away, Dan. Yeah, let's, let's talk about that task card a little bit. Uh, you're right. And nobody needs more paperwork when they're trying to run their business, no. right? <laughs> so what task does is we do all the plan administration. We do all the year end reports. We provide an audit guarantee with the, the benefits that we put in place. But that task card is a critical component to tracking medical expenses. What it actually is, is a merchant coded debit card that we tie directly into the business account. So if you go to a pharmacy, for example, you've got a $30 prescription drug and a candy bar. You swipe your card. It'll carve out the deductible item and give you a remaining balance for the non-deductible non-deductible item. So it does two things for you. Number one, 
is it eliminates some of that paper shuffle, right? You don't have to worry about tracking that receipt and reimbursing a spouse. It comes directly out of your checking account, just like you were to use a normal debit card. And secondarily, it is merchant coded. So like I said, the candy bar is not a deduct deductible item, it gives you remaining balance and make sure that that expense is tracked on your year end report. So at the end of a plan year, all that somebody needs to do is go in, print off their task card transactions. And if they had any other premiums that they didn't use their task card for, for example, their major medical, their health insurance, maybe it's a long-term care plan. Maybe they've got an accident policy like an AFLAC or something like that. All of those are deductible items and they can simply be added into the year end report for that particular uh, client. Wow. Wow. And so, so they don't have to keep track of anything. All they need to do is swipe the card and what can they use for the card? What can they, what kind of medical bills can they write off? So it's even expanded this year because of COVID uh, even over the counter drugs are a deductible item this year. Uh, but typically it's going to be your prescriptions, your co-pays, anything, a chiropractor. When you go to a doctor, for example, you wait till you get that exp explanation of benefits to show what your insurance paid for and what your responsibility is. You literally just put your task card number on there, pay for that bill just like you would normally with a credit card or a check. Uh, so dental, vision, all of those things are going to be deductible items. And a lot of times, people don't really even keep good track of what they spend for medical because at the end of the day, they know they can't deduct it anyways. When you can create a legitimate business deduction with your medical expenses, it's treated no different than any other business expense you have. And you may find that you're, you're paying 12, 14, 18, $20,000 a year in medical expenses. And this plan that we can put in place will give you the legitimate ability to take a full deduction on it. Wow. And so, what do they need to do? Like, what is their step? Like if they want to take the next step and mm -hmm. what would they need to do throughout the year? I would say the first thing that we need to establish is a, a, a basic phone call, you know, to see if it's something that they do qualify for. Um, they're going to need to establish payroll for their spouse. And people always ask me, well, Dan, you know, what should I pay my spouse? It's really more of a technicality. We need to have a W-2 wage there. So even if you pay your spouse a hundred dollars a month, literally, just something that generates that W-2, have your accountant file the year-end payroll report and a, a W-2 by the end of January, and that component is taken care of. That's all you need to have in place. The annual fee to have uh, an HRA in place with TASC is $475. Okay, and again, like I mentioned earlier, that comes with all the year-end reports, that comes with the TASC card, that comes with an audit guarantee, and most of these clients are calling me annually to do a review maybe help them file their year-end report, things like that. So you'll have me to access uh, for that fee as well. So I've got 12 years of experience in writing these plans, um, work with people all over, every corner of the country. So happy to help. And so, you know, guys, I've been using this plan, I guess for the last year and a half now. And I don't know if you, if you guys realize, but I've had massive medical issues and um, I have been turned down for health insurance for, uh, health insurance, life insurance and dis disability insurance due to mold poisoning um, for 10 years. So uh, it is very beneficial and helpful for me to have this in place. And yes, we use it for our orthodontist. We use it for um, we use it for glasses. We use it for over the counter now. I mean, we use it for everything that has to do with medical. And, you know, at the end of the day, it is not about how much money you make. It's about how much money that you keep. So tell me, because I, I think there's lots of confusion on what is the difference in an HRA and an HSA. And then there's a lot of people that have an HSA through work, but I think they're very limited. So, and I'm not sure. So I wanted to ask you that and uh, get you to clarify that for me. Sure. That's a great question. And a lot of people actually use both. You can use an HSA with an HRA, but there you have to structure it correctly. So first and foremost, when somebody has a health savings account, they need to have a qualifying high deductible health plan in order to have that health savings account. And what happens with a health savings account is the money that you put into that HSA as a deduction on your 1040. So you're saving state and federal income taxes. What I find in the biggest problem with an HSA is that most people that have an HSA, they're money in, money out. They're not actually saving money in there, which is the intended purpose. And if that is the case, you'd be better off just having an HRA in place. 
Because again, keep in mind, when we have an HRA, we pick up that additional 15.3% in FICA, the Medicare, self-employment, Social Security. So in that particular circumstance, the HRA is going to be a much more significant tax benefit. Okay. Now let's say the flip side of that coin, you're somebody that has very low medical expenses and you can afford to fully fund that health savings account and leave that money there to grow tax deferred until you're 65 and then you can start using it for Medicare supplements or post-retirement medical expenses. HSAs are great, but there has to be money there in order to take advantage of it, okay? So when you are a situation where you can fund your HSA, the HRA or the, the biz plan HRA becomes limited purpose. So it can be used for premiums, vision, and dental. The HSA then would be used for your no normal doctor visits and copays, prescriptions, things like that. You just got to make sure that you're not double dipping in order to maintain compliance. So to answer your question, it really depends on the situation. The HRA is going to provide a better tax advantage overall because it's a business deduction, whereas the HSA is a 1040 deduction, much like uh, mortgage interest or property taxes. So in order to get the HRA or the HSA deduction, you've got to be able to itemize or no? You don't necessarily have to be able to itemize, um, but you do have to have a qualifying plan in order to have that HSA in place. And secondarily, yeah. there is an age limit on HSAs. You can, you can no longer fund an HSA after 65. The HRA has no age restrictions and you don't technically even have to have health insurance in order to have an HRA. It just puts you in a situation to take a deduction on it. And can you run through a, you know, you've got the Christian uh, MediShare plans like right. MediShare, Liberty Health Share, all of those can run through the HRA. That's correct. And that's actually brand new legislation. So in the past, those um, contributions is what they're called to a health sharing ministry have never been a deduction, but there's legislation out right now that starting the first of the year, the HSM contributions are actually going to be deductible as an out-of-pocket expense. So, Without an HRA, those would have to be itemized. And again, back to your 7.5% AGI, most people will never see that. If you have an HRA in place, those are going to be deductible from dollar one. You don't have to worry about the, uh, the AGI and you're going to be able to take a business deduction on those contributions. I love it. I love it. So, so it sounds like it's fairly easy to set up. And I, I mean, I've been through this process, guys. So, I mean, literally I had a conversation with Dan he asked me how many medical bills, how much I was rough, roughly spending in medical bills. I have four people in my household. I, I think actually five now that have braces, which is crazy. Uh, thankfully, I've never had to have braces, but everybody else has had to have it in my family. Yep. And, uh, you know, we've got a, we've got a son with glasses. I mean, and so we've just used it and used it and used it and used it. And probably there's been a lot of times that I haven't even thought about using it that I could have used it. So how is there a way to get some of those, which I know you don't want to go crazy about trying to um, add expenses in that you don't use the card, but what if you didn't use the card and you had some medical expenses? So when we set up a new plan, Courtney, uh, you're, you're assigned with that 12 digit task ID. So you'll actually be able to create an account online at taskonline.com. You'll be able to add expenses. So if you, for example, set up a plan with me tomorrow, it, that process takes about 10 minutes, literally, and we can backdate to the first of the month on out-of-pocket expenses and first of the year on insurance premiums. So if somebody sets up a plan for 2020, we're still going to be able to backdate on the insurance. When you get that task online account set up, you're going to be able to go in, click on my expenses, add new expense, and literally enter in any expenses that were incurred outside of those task card transactions. So very easy. Wow. And, you know, as far as setting up, so I know a lot of you on here have LLCs treated as S corporations. We don't want to put it through that entity. We want a separate entity, but we can help you set up an LLC or just a sole proprietorship. The only thing we need to get is a federal ID number and the name of a company. Correct. And then from there, we can take that and we can set up the HRA or Dan can set up the HRA for you. And then from there, we just need to process payroll and we can do that for you. So if we're already doing payroll for one of your companies, we only charge an additional 30 bucks a month to handle all of the payroll tax returns and the payroll taxes and the payroll and all that good stuff. And, you know, so we, we don't handle payroll in-house, just so you guys are aware. We sub it out to a great friend of mine, 
that's all they do is payroll. Um, they're amazing to deal with, but we just invoice it. It makes it super simple. And we work together hand in hand to make sure not only are you um, saving as much money as possible, you're paying as, as little amount in, in taxes as possible as far as payroll, because we don't want you to have to spend a lot of money in payroll taxes, right? Because that obviously you're not going to get a lot of that in Social Security back. And then, but we want to make sure you're compliant along the way. So Dan, is there anything else you want to add to just kind of sharing with people? I know you have some other plans. So, and we have uh, people that have employees, but just a couple different things that you could implement, help people understand that there's extra fringe benefits out there. I know like a, a cafeteria plan is huge. That's something I need to talk with you about with my staff and I keep forgetting about, and we probably need to make that happen sooner rather than later. So go ahead. Sure. So I can really break down any business entity into three different segments and I'll just refer to it as A, B and C clients. So the A type client is going to be your typical sole proprietorship or your mom pa shop where there literally are no other employees. So if you're in a situation where you're an A type client and you pay for your own insurance or you've got you know, over $2,000 a year in medical expenses, an HRA is a no brainer, literally. So that kind of wraps up the A-type client. The B-type client is going to be somebody that has multiple benefit eligible employees. Okay, So to be an A-type employer, you can't have Johnny hired man. You can't have a secretary. You can't have other full-time employees because you're in a situation where you could be discriminating against your employees. If, yep, I'm going to cover my wife for 100% of our family's insurance, but my full-time employee, yeah, I'm not going to do anything there. So you got to be in a situation where uh, we can set up those eligibility requirements and exclude part-time employees or seasonal employees or college and high school aged employees. And if you can't, you're a B-type employer. A B-type employer has multiple benefit eligible employees, but they do not provide group health insurance. There's a lot of these employers that are out there today and they're in a real struggle to attract and retain employees because they don't provide health insurance. And that's expensive, right? But when you're a B-type employer, you can utilize an HRA in a different way. You can create a defined contribution towards benefits. So maybe you're not going to pay for 100% of their premium or 100% of their out-of-pocket like you would in an A-type situation, but maybe you want to give them $400 a month pre-tax so they can use that money to pay for their own insurance. That's the ability that an HRA can provide. Secondarily, there's new tax laws out there uh, called the uh, Individual Coverage HRA. It's or an ICRA, maybe some people have heard of it as. What that will do is provide somebody the ability to, Courtney, I'm gonna give you $400 a month towards your insurance, but your family premiums are actually $1,000. The ICRA will allow for the employee to actually participate and put aside money out of their own payroll pre-tax so they can get that entire insurance premium taken on a pre-tax benefit. Wow. So that's, a, that's something I don't even know if you and I have talked much about, mm -hmm. but for somebody that has multiple employees, Again, that creates a situation where the employer can have a look and feel like they're providing benefits without actually having to dive into that group insurance market. Because when you're in a group insurance market, your premiums are gonna go up every year. It's very hard to control, budget for it, know what you're gonna spend. Where if you go in and set up an HRA or an ACRA, you determine how much you're gonna provide to your employees for benefits. And then they have the ability to fund through payroll for things like their, their portion that they wanna pay or maybe they set it up to do an HSA, medical FSA, maybe they do parking and transit, maybe they do dependent care. There are so many options that are out there. And the best thing that we can do, honestly, is just to have a 15 minute conversation so I can learn a little bit more about the business situation, learn what you have, what you're wanting to do, and then we can figure out a, a solution and customize it to best fit your needs. That's awesome. So, and we'll talk about C in just a second, but I do, I wanna add this. And I've had had this conversation with my staff and honestly, um, what's so crazy, it, I had a conversation with every single person individually a couple months ago and just to find out what would make OTB tax better, what would they want as far as the benefit? And all of them said, none of them were health insurance, none of them were 401k, all of them were more money. And so one of the ways that you could add on, because a lot of people need help with medical expenses. Like there's not too many people in this country that do not take medication other than me because <laughs> um, I refuse to do it. But you know, there's a lot of people out there that, that take some sort of medication and what I'm understanding you saying 
is that you'd have the ability to be able to allow them to spend that money on whether they wanted a needed a chiropractor or they needed um, they needed medication or you know they needed something other than just health insurance because health insurance is the first step. If you can't afford the health insurance, you and you can't afford the doctor bill, right? I mean, it's like some people are paying so much in health insurance they can't afford to go to the doctor. It may be better for them to actually just go to the doctor. So that's a way not only to save them money for you offering to, you know, I'm gonna pay so much per month on this, but it's the other thing is, is they don't have to pay FICA taxes on the money, which is 7.65%. And guess what? As the employer, you don't have to pay FICA taxes on the money. So it's saving you 7.65% of every dollar that you're giving them in a fringe benefit. And so they're actually much better off at some point in time for you to give them money through this way and increase in pay instead of giving them money in a pay raise because they're paying less in taxes. So That's go correct. ahead. Yep, absolutely. And uh, once we get into a C-type employer, a C-type employer has that integrated group health insurance. So at that point, a cafeteria plan is kind of like a no brainer. It should just automatically pair with a group insurance policy so that again, even if the employer doesn't want to provide more benefits, they can at least give the employee the ability to set aside money out of their paycheck to pre-tax for things like, again, dependent care is a big one, right? Uh, parking and transit. It could be um, medical FSA. It could be health savings account if they've got a qualifying high deductible. If somebody integrates an HSA through a cafeteria plan and has that funding happen through payroll deductions, they're picking up the additional FICA taxes. A lot of people don't realize that. So as an employer, if you're offering a group health insurance plan and it's a qualifying high deductible plan, integrating an HSA into your group platform into that cafeteria plan will provide better tax advantages than if somebody just goes and sets up their private HSA through a bank in town and, and funds it on their own. Because again, we're able to save that additional payroll taxes. So lots of options. And I think we can honestly spend hours talking through the different ways and variations. Uh, but the best thing to do is just to set up a time, you know, 15, 20 minutes to answer a few questions, uh, ask a few questions, and I can be able to identify if there's some, some holes in what you're doing and maybe find a, a solution to, to help save you some money. I love it. And see, and guys, this is stuff that most accountants don't even know. And the only reason that I know about it is that I was in the life and health insurance arena. I actually worked for a company called Aflac. Most of you probably don't know that. I was the young, youngest district manager they ever had at 21. And the reason why I understand cafeteria plans and HSAs and HRAs is that we offered a cafeteria plan for the, just for the, the um, premium. Yep. So they, they limited it to the, to the premium. And I would go into business owners and say, Hey, like if you just offered our products, right. And you offer that, we'd give you this cafeteria plan. But the thing is, is that if you don't have the proper mechanisms in place, like one, it was only for our premium. And so it was very limited. And I didn't know that there was a benefit man administrator I could go out there to and get help with dependent daycare, which is a huge, huge deal. Mm -hmm. So anybody who has dependent daycare, like this will be great for you to be able to offer. And the business owner doesn't pay it. It's the individuals paying it. But now they're keeping more of their money, which makes you look like a hero. And all you did was call Dan and have Dan put this all in place for you even if you didn't understand it. So that's how I kind of learned about it. And it's been years and years and I never really told anybody that they needed it because it just wasn't something I was thinking about every day. So if you have medical bills and you have medical insurance or and or you need an HRA if you are a business owner. So um, we can help you with all the paperwork you, you're going to need to reach out to us to do um, it. We'll connect you to Dan immediately or there's actually, I'm going to put a link in there. You can book a time on Dan's calendar. You don't have to reach out to us at all. Um, but second, Dan is going to send you right back to us and we're going to have to set you up on payroll. So that's the only thing you really have to do. Um, this has saved us, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars. I can't even, I, I wish I would have looked that up to try to tell you guys, you know, what it's done for us. But 
just book a time on his calendar, reach out back to us um, or he will send you back to us and we will be in the loop and make sure that you're taken care of. Um, that's all you got to do. So no paperwork, no dealing with all this stuff. Dan and Courtney and OTB tax or, and task are going to handle it all for you. So I hope this was very helpful. Is there anything else, Dan, do you think we need to add? Like, I want to make sure we try to answer all the questions we can possibly answer for these people. Honestly, I think that's that's really where we're at right now. Um, I wouldn't discredit the fact that we're in October right now. A lot of people think, well, maybe I'll wait and we'll do this in December. If I uh, had a dollar for every time that I've talked to somebody and they tell me this is going to be great because I had $5,000 of medical bills last month, there's nothing I can do about last month, okay? So I would recommend getting a plan in place sooner rather than later. We can backdate on insurance to the first of the year, out of pocket expenses to the first of the month. And from now until the end of the year, we will actually run a, a two year plan. So instead of enrolling somebody at 475, October 15th, and then turning around and sending you an invoice for the 2021 plan year, what we can do is a 675 plan that will cover 2020 and 2021. So don't put it off. I, I again would just have that conversation to see if it's something you can utilize. And if you can't, that's okay too. At least you know more about the HRA and the plan and what it can do for you or what it can't. So let's have that conversation and figure out where you're at. And it's the tax deduction. So that's the thing. Yeah. The 475 or the 675 is a tax deduction for you. And this, the last thing I want to share with that is guys, you know, if, you don't need it right now. I need you to keep this in the back on the back burner because the minute you get a medical bill, don't pay the medical bill till you get an HRA. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like just hold off on the medical bill and get an HRA in place. Reach out to me. If you've forgotten how to find this, uh, this YouTube and Facebook live that we're going to have, um, reach out to us so we can get that set up for you so that you can then pre-tax the HRA and that can become a tax deduction for you instead of a wasted deduction for you. So Dan, I appreciate you being on here and sharing, you know, we are committed to educating the masses, small businesses, medium sized businesses, as much as large businesses are today. See that the only way that you can truly get to be a large business is to know the tax code and understand it so you can keep more of your money. And that's exactly what we're committed to doing. So I appreciate you being on here and uh, talking about fringe benefits. Absolutely. All right, guys, have a good day.